I would like to answer this morning a question. A question many people have. And the question is, why do many people fall from, from faith? So look at here now, fall from faith. Because our faith elevates us. Our faith brings us closer to whom? God. The Bible says without faith it is impossible for you to please God. So your faith leads you to please God. Lifts you up. And the question is why then so many people fall from there? From the faith. Let us go to the very first human being to fall from faith. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 15, start saying, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and what? Keep it. Man was not idle in the garden of Eden. Man was busy. He was standing and keeping the garden. And the Lord God commanded man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may eat, or you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely what? Die. Shall surely die. Which means, in a sort of speaking manner, that a tree was poisonous. So man should not eat. The day he ate, he would what? Die. Was poisonous. God did for men pretty much what you do for your children. You tell your children, do not touch the socket. The PowerPoint. If you touch the PowerPoint, you will what? You will die. Or you get shocked. Maybe not die, but get shocked. You warn them of the danger of touching there. Not because you don't want your children having fun. right? You want them to be well. You tell them that not because it is too mysterious. And they cannot understand the mystery of it. No, it's for their protection. And that's pretty much what God did. You will not touch. The day you touch, you die. In other words, it is poisonous. It is poisonous. That was the first command God gave to men. Listen to this. There was no other commandment. There was nothing else God said to men. Refrain from doing. The only command. The only thing men had to refrain from doing was. Touching. The tree of the knowledge. Of good and what? Evil. The truth is that tree. Was not the knowledge of good and evil. Was the knowledge of evil. Because good men knew. When we say God is good, people say all day, time, God is good. So good they knew. What they did not know was evil. The commands God gave is to protect you from evil. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us to pray, deliver us from what? From evil. From all evil. The Bible. The Bible is a book that if you, com if you comply with, you will be delivered from what? Evil. If you follow the instructions of God, the instructions of God leads you to a path which is away from what? Evil. So if you want to be delivered from evil, obey what God says. It's not difficult. I mean, it's not difficult in theory. It's difficult in practice, but in theory is obey what God says. So the only command God gave, do not eat from that tree. The day you eat, you die. In other words, it is a poison. But we are here to answer a question. And the question is, why do many people fall from what? Fall from faith. Let us go to chapter 3. Chapter 3. The same book, Genesis chapter 3. From verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more cunning 
than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, look at the Tala Tala. When God spoke to men not to touch, not to eat, God spoke to Adam. Eve was created after. Eve was created after. God had commanded men, but Eve was aware. Eve was aware of what she was doing. When it comes to sin, God treats sins differently in the following way. There are sins we commit unaware of. For instance, before I became a Christian, I knew lie was bad. I knew lie was not good, but I never knew lie was a sin. So I lied through my teeth. I knew it was bad, but I was a bad boy. So I lied. But when I came to God, I understood that lie was not just bad. Lie was what? A sin. So I stopped what? Lying. Pastor, how about all the times you lied before? That's what the cross is for. That's why Jesus died on the cross. For your sins. But hold on. For the sins you were not aware of. Pastor, how about the sins I am aware of? You have your knees. You got to go down on your knees and repent from them. Who understood the tala tala? So the sins you commit without knowledge, the cross suffice. The blood of Jesus on the cross paid for them. If she was aware, taking the tree of the knowledge of evil was a choice she made knowing well that there were consequences. She knew there was a price to pay. So she was not unaware. Now, when you seem unaware of your sins, remember this, the cross pays the price. But when you seem aware of your sins, you got to go down on your knees and repent sincerely. So your sins can be taken away from you. So now let us continue here. Talking about the reason why men. So many people fall. So she was aware she should not touch. Verse 4 says. Then the serpent said to the woman. You will not surely die. For God knows. That in the day you eat. Of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and what evil. So far, they only knew good, but now they would know evil. So when the woman saw, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, in that tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her. And he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they should fig leaves together and make themselves coverings. And on verse 8 you see there. When God came down, they hid from God. They hid from God. Because they knew they had made mistakes. They had disobeyed the only commandment God gave to them. There were not many, just one. Now, why, why did they fall from the faith? The reason why they fell from the faith is the reason why anyone falls from faith. The reason why they fell from, we call the grace of God, from, the, from the, the, good, the, the good side of God. They fell away from his blessing. They fell away from his plan. Is also the reason why 
all those people who fall, they fall. And the first reason is, they take their eyes from God. Why do people fall from faith? Because they stop looking to God and they start looking elsewhere. They stop listening to the voice of God and they start listening to any other voice. The Bible says Eve, she knew she, could, she should not touch, but she heard the voice of the serpent and she ignored the voice of God. The voice of God is for you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The voice of God is for you to love those who hate you. Do you know anyone who hates you? Who knows someone who hates you? Pastor, I know that person hates me. You know, it could be someone in your workplace, sometimes even in your own family. Pastor, I know that person hates me. But the Bible says you do not have the right to hate them. If you want to be saved, you have to love them. And if you hate them, you are doing the same thing Adam and Eve they did. You are taking from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge, not of good and evil, but of evil. That's going to take you away from God. Death, spiritual death. Why? Because God gave us a command to be followed and you chose not to. So the Bible gives us this command, love those who hate you. Pray, pray, pray for those who spitefully treat you and use you. Pray for them. Okay, pastor, that I can do. God, please kill them, kill them, kill them. No, not this prayer. No, not a prayer like that for them to live long, for them to see good. Who's understanding the tala tala? It is the same command. And when you choose to disobey, you are doing exactly what Eve did. You are choosing to fall away from faith. Because you are no longer listening to the voice of God. You are listening to the voice of the world. You are listening to the voice of this broken world we have today. You are listening to the voice of your heart. And the Bible says that your heart is corrupt. The Bible says there is nothing more wicked, listen to this carefully, there is nothing more wicked than our hearts. So when you ignore the voice of God, to follow the voice of the world, to follow the voice of your heart, you think it's the voice of your heart, you think it is the voice of the world, but it's the voice of the serpent. It is the voice of the serpent. Or what was possessing the serpent. In Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says, When the war broke out in heaven, Michael and his angels fought, and the devil could not prevail. But the Bible calls the devil the serpent of old. Listen to this, the serpent of old. The great dragon, the serpent of old, called the devil or Satan. Who deceives, look what the Bible says of him, who deceives the whole world. So when you think it is the voice of your heart, it is the voice of the deceiver. It is the voice of the serpent of old. When you think it is the voice of the world, it is the voice of the deceiver. It is the voice of the serpent of old. So ignore the voice of the serpent of old and focus on the voice of Adam and Eve. They fell, first of all, because they ignored the voice of God to follow another voice. When you are in church, look to the talatala, but focus on the one behind the talatala. Can you see him? His name you can see. Jesus, focus on his voice, set your eyes on him. Another thing now that makes many people fall, first the voice. They stop listening to the voice of God and they focus on the voice of whatever they think it is. But in truth it is the voice of the serpent of old. Deceiving the whole world, not those who are God's. 
The second thing is, Eve saw that the tree was pleasant to the eyes. She took her eyes from God and focused on what she should not focus on. And that's one of the things that makes most Christians fall from faith. They divert their attention from God and they set their attention elsewhere. They start to look at people. How many people come to church and they leave church and they say, I'll never go back. And when they ask it, why? They say, oh, because that person, because of the other person, because of the other person. No, you will never come back because you failed to understand your eyes must be focused on whom? On God. Do you remember the days of black and white television? Who remembers those days? We are old, aren't we? Huh? Black and white. And you were watching black and white television. You couldn't care more or less about the color of the actor or the actress. Because you couldn't see whether they were white or black. Or yellow or whatever other color. Black and white. Life was easier then. And then came the, the colored screen TV. Huh? Now you say, oh, look at her. Not as beautiful as before, right? And then we come to the 4K, 8K. You see the wrinkle spots and all the... <laughs> because you see closer. Before they were all, all, all clear looking, young looking, beautiful. Now, oh, she looks like 70. Black and white, she looked like 25. Now it's 70. Because you are close, you can see more. Deviate your eyes from others. The closer, look at the tala tala, the closer you look at people, the more, more mistakes, more flaws you will spot. Perhaps you're here today falling or fallen or have already fallen from faith because you took your eyes from God and you put your eyes on the pastor. You took your eyes from God and you start to looking at someone else. Another member of the church, perhaps at an assistant, and you started looking too close. And if you look too close, you will see mistakes, you will spot flaws, because none of us are perfect. All of us need a savior. All of us need a savior. And we need a savior because we are not perfect. So when you take your eyes from Jesus and you look at someone else, the longer you look at them, the more mistakes you will spot. And the weaker you will be in faith. And you will fall. Like many have fallen, like Adam and Eve fell, you will fall. Because you took your eyes from whom? From God. Look at the Tala Tala, friends. Set your eyes on God. People surrounding you will fail. I will fail you. But God never what? Fails. God never fails. So set your eyes on him. It's not for nothing. The name highest in the church is the name of Jesus. When you look at the altar, you see the name of Jesus, he is the one you should be looking at. No one else. If you look at anyone else, if you look at anything else, you will fall. You will, you will fall. Adam and Eve, they took their ears from God. They took their eyes from God. They fell. If you take your ears and your eyes from God, you will fall. You know, in the letters to the seven churches... The letters to the seven churches in Revelation, which symbolizes every Christian in the entire world throughout time and space. That's what the seven letters symbolize, Christians throughout the world. To the seven churches, there is an advice or there is a promise to the overcomer. There is a promise to the overcomer. And I'm going to lead you to understand who the overcomers are. Let us go to the first the first was the loveless church, Ephesus. Listen to this. Ephesus was a church that fell. 
from their first love. Majority of the people, including the Talatala of Ephesus, had fallen away from the first love. But look what the Bible says. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life. The tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. If you go back to your Bible, chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 24. So he, meaning God, drove out the men, and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, and the flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So men could not have access to the tree of life. Now look at what happened to the tree of life. Is in the midst of the paradise of God. And whoever overcomes, they are going to eat the fruit of the tree of? The fruit of the tree of? Of life. Now, God, he kept men away from the tree of life. So men could no longer live long. If you look in the Old Testament, in Genesis, the beginning, you will see people lived a thousand e close to a thousand years. 900 and something years. Methuselah, the oldest man that we, we, we had records of in the Bible. You see people living extremely lengthy, lengthy lives. Why? Because Adam had access to all the trees, including the tree of life. And there he had children. His children lived as well long because the tree of life was in him. He, ne he, ne he lived in nearly a thousand years. Adam. But the Bible says cherubim were protecting it so they could live no longer eternally. But to those who overcome, God will give them what? To eat from the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You will live eternally with him. Again, who are the overcomers? At those who do not look to the ones who fell from the first love. In church, you will find people falling from the first love. You will, you will meet people who are no longer as respectable as they should be. They are no longer as fearful as they should be to the things of God. Listen to this. In the church, you will find people who no longer pray as they prayed before, before God. You will find people who lost their first love. The overcomer are those who keep their sight and their eyes on God. They do not follow those who lost their first love. Focus on Jesus. And you will never lose your first love because of the misbehavior and the lack of faith of others. You will focus. The second church... The second church, the persecuted church, Shmana. The Bible says, he who overcomes shall not be what? Come on, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by what? The second death. Look at the title, the persecuted church. This church here, Jesus had no condemnation against. But there were warnings. And the warning is, some of you will be put to death. Some of you will face trials, persecution. Now, if you overcome all the trials and persecution, because every true Christian will face them. If you overcome them, you will not be hurt by the second death, which is the final separation from whom? God. You will be together with God. Why you overcame persecution? And why did you overcome persecution? Pay attention to this. You kept your eyes on whom? On God. Keep your eyes on him. The third church. Pergamon. Or Pergamons. The compromising church. Compromising church. They were comp their faith was compromised. They were allowing. They were allowing strange practices within the church. They allowed people to bring practices from their old religion to the church, so they were compromising their faith. But even there, there were those who were not compromising their faith because they kept their eyes and their ears focused on whom? 
God. To them the Bible says, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone. And on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. I call it the name of your soul. The name of your soul. But to the overcomers. In a church that compromised their faith, there were people who were not compromising theirs. They set their eyes and their ears on whom? On God. They are the overcomers. They are the overcomers. The fourth church, the corrupt church, Thyatara, corrupt. This church here was not compromising, they were corrupt. They compromised so much to the point of corrupting themselves. But even in that church who was corrupted, there were people who held their faith. And they were the overcomers. And they promised to them, and he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end. Important. You have to keep his works until the You have to love your neighbor until the you have to forgive your brother until the yeah. end. You have to be faithful to your spouse until the yeah. end. It's all until the end. Pastor, I have done it long enough. Long enough is not enough if it's not to the end. You have to keep the works of God until the end. You have to keep your eyes on him until the end. You have to keep your ears focused on him until yeah. the end. Until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. As I also have received from my father. And I will give him the morning star. Again, these are people who were... In a church which was corrupted. But even there, there were people who focused on God. We have no excuse. Focus on God. If the house where you live is corrupted by idolatry, focus on God. If your spouse is corrupted by adultery, you focus on whom? God. Some people say you have to do the same thing. You know, she did against you, he did against you. You have to do the same. No, focus on God. This is the voice of the serpent of old. Huh? He hates you, hate him as well. He hates you, hate him as well. This is the voice of the serpent of old. Be faithful until the end. Keep his works until you the end. The next church, the dead church, Sardis. This church, look at me here now, this church was dead. Had the name of church, but was dead inside. Dead inside. A dead church. But even there, where the people were dead in their spiritual life, there were people who were alive because they were focusing on whom? On God. Focus on God. The Bible says their, their prize, their, their recompense for what they did. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his holy angels. So in a place where everyone was living a dead faith. A dead faith. There were those who overcame. Now, interesting enough, if Jesus here said, I will not blot their names from the book of life, I will not um, uh, how does, yeah, blot out his name from the book of life, it means those who were dead in their faith, one day their names were written where? In the book of life. But because they stopped looking at Jesus... And they started looking at someone else. They stopped listening to the voice of God. And they started listening to someone else's voice. And their faith died. Their name was what? Blotted out 
from the book of life. Perhaps your name is in the book of life. But God is about to take it out. Because you are allowing your faith to die. Be an overcomer. Look back to Jesus. Look back to Jesus. Philadelphia. Philadelphia was a perfect church. Faithful church to God. There were no complaints about Philadelphia. But if they overcame until the end, look at the blessing, the promises to them. He who overcomes, I will make him what? A pillar. In the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. The new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new. So Jesus has a new name. This year I will write on him my new name. If you know cattle, if you know cattle, if you know farming, you know that a cattle is branded. By the owner. Belongs to that person. Is branded after him. This cow is. You know Fabian's. If the cow is found out. Okay that's Fabian's. It's branded. Here Jesus is saying. I will write my name. My new name on them. They are his. But those who are faithful until the end. And for you to be faithful until the end. You have to ignore every other voice. Every other thought. Look to him. Now, the worst and last church, Laodicea, the lukewarm church, the worst church is still there where people had a faith. Their faith was lukewarm. They had a lukewarm life with God to the point of Jesus saying, I am about to vomit you. Psst. Look what Jesus said of them. I am about to Vomit you out of my mouth. You're going to be expelled from within me. You'll no longer be part of me. But even there, there were overcomers. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Seven promises to the overcomers. And who are these overcomers? Those, those who kept their eyes on whom? On Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 12, to finalize, Hebrew chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. In the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. This is the secret for you to be an overcomer. You have to look unto whom? Jesus. Jesus. The author and the finisher of your faith. Faith, the overcomers are those who look on to Jesus. If the church is dead, they are not dead because they are looking to Jesus and Jesus is pretty much alive. If the church is compromising, they don't look to the church, they look to whom? Jesus, who is not compromising, he is not corrupt, he has not lost the first love. So they keep on looking to him and if you keep on looking to him, you will not fall. But if you take your eyes from him, your ears from him, yes, you will lose your first love. You will compromise. You will corrupt yourself. And you will have a dead faith or a lukewarm faith. All because you stopped looking to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith, and you started looking elsewhere or listening elsewhere. Do you want a great example of life? Look to Jesus, the author and finisher 
of your faith. Amen. Perhaps you are looking at someone else. And that someone else you are looking to is disappointing you. That someone else you are looking to, you are listening to, is disappointing you. You expected much from her, much from him. But much is too much. We are imperfect. We are flawed. Do not expect much from anyone. Do not expect much from me. Just like you need a savior, I also need what? A savior. Look to Jesus. We pastors, we come and go, but the name of Jesus never what? Goes. Look to him. We live and die. Jesus died on the cross, but on the third day he what? Huh? He rose. Did he not stay dead? So look to him. There are no flaws in him. We live in an 8K world. You see everything clear. Too clear. Hmm? So stop looking at people. And look to Jesus. If you look to him, you will never fall. Doesn't matter the environment you are into. You will not fall. Nothing will corrupt you. Because you are looking to him. Amém.